A lot of Asian foodies and small business owners are turning on David Chang for trying to copyright the word chili crunch, affecting a lot of their businesses. David, let's talk about it. We thought Momofuku was trying to help promote Asian American, but now we find out you just want to dominate the rest of Asian Americans. Let's run the clip. Here's our take. Chili oil, chili crisp, chili crunch has been a thing for quite some time. It's been around even before I was born. So what gives? Why are we repeating the same third culture bakery nonsense? A lot of us started this business during the pandemic and eventually it became our careers. But for some of us, it's still a small business. We don't make an enormous amount of money. We don't have extravagant investors to fund us. And we sure as hell don't got the money to fight and pay for legal fees. Mila and Homaya, Homia have been around the block for a minute. So they're leagues ahead of us. At the same time, there's plenty of pie to go around for all of us. And to be honest, it's only time until David Chang and Momofuku go after us. This cease and desist game only means you're scared of competition. You're scared of your own people making it in this world. Why can't we just inspire ourselves and continue making great products and innovate the things we love to make instead of putting each other down? We're not sure what's our plan of action, and there's probably gonna be ways to skirt around it, But for sure, we're going to keep on keeping on. We've gotten this far and we're not going to let this celebrity sellout take this shit away from us. We put out too much blood, sweat and tears to stop our dream to be business owners. And so we'll see where that goes. Boom! And listen, if you follow Asian foodie spaces on the internet, this is going viral right now. Let's just read the title from the Guardian article. Trademark bully Momofuku turns up the heat on other selling chili crunch. Andrew, he gave a cease and desist to Mila, which is another big brand. Right. So, guys, this is for specifically the phrase chili crunch and chile crunch. Now, if you look on the trademark search, which I did... Chile Crunch, with the E, is already registered under Momofuku, so they successfully have trademarked that. But Chili Crunch is still pending, and I think that's where this comes into play because uh, Chili Crunch is going to be a little bit harder to trademark because those are two regular words, and it's used by a lot of different businesses. But regardless, this does affect a lot of small businesses uh, that make their own Chili Crunch right, because right, they're right. going to have to change their labels and change their name if this goes through. And basically, a lot of people are feeling like David Chang, he was already rich, and why is his squad and himself trying to squeeze out all these little people and give them cease and desist? So, Dave, we're going to go through the comment section, and if, you know, maybe are people right for hating on David Chang and Momofuku right now, or are is this overblown? Is it legal? And we're going to talk about it. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. And of course, check out Smala Sauce at SmalaSauce.com. You can get it for pre-order right now. The second batch is coming soon. Back better than ever. I'll tell you this, man. The Asian foodie world has this sense of like wanting to represent Asian culture in the West. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that are coming into this space, it's like they, they might be just like, well, I introduced the word uh, this product first to the Western market, let me own the whole thing. Right, and, and we have to acknowledge Momofuku is the largest brand that uses Chili Crunch, even larger than Mila, which we know like Simu is involved in and we've tried their products as well. But Momofuku is probably the most successful one that uses particularly Chili Crunch. By the way, Lao Gama, the auntie one, uses Chili Crisp. Right, and they were around since 97, the ingredients around for 100 years. All around China, the Chinese diasporic, Southeast Asia places, they were making some version of Chili Crisp for like 100 years. Right. And I think the one thing that people don't like is David Chang, sometimes on his podcast, he talks about how much he loves different Asian cultures, Pan-Asian culture. He cooks. I mean, he named Momofuku a Japanese name. He got famous for doing Momofuku buns, which are really just Chinese or Taiwanese guabaos. But so a lot of people, Eddie Huang was really mad at him back then for not attributing it to Taiwan or China originally. So basically, a lot of people are saying that David Chang built a career Columbusing things from other Asian cultures, not even his own and then trying to own the trademark for them. right so here's my thing about food i don't know if uh nobody owns the taiwanese buns or the chinese buns you know the, the like it's right, so there's some debate if it's a who yes. it's from hunan hunan to taipei so to me him serving like chinese inspired food is fine because a lot of his food was inspired by western china as well 
right? But the trademarking thing is kind of a weird move. It's kind of a what a lot of people consider a D-bag move. It's not illegal to do. He can do it. He's the big company. They got the money. They have the legal team. He was team. first to market. Yeah. First to market in a Western sense. Obviously, he he didn't invent this product at all, but he was the first guy to use the word crunch. But And, I, and now some people are saying it might be people on his private equity team, right. but at the same time, he's going to take all the heat for it. Maybe he okayed it. I don't even know if at this point he has any ability to stop it, but it goes in line with like a series of a pattern of behavior that people mm. have recognized from David Chang and his squad. Right, right, right. Um, I will say this too. It's like, it's really messy when, if you are self proclaimed whitewashed Korean guy from DC, you name your company Japanese and then you sell a lot of Chinese or Western Chinese or Chinese diasporic products. People are going to raise an eyebrow. Yeah. I mean, I think it kind of goes along with surprisingly his reputation that he has, which is kind of like, he'll just do whatever he wants with no regard. And I think he just doesn't care if you're not rich and famous, basically he doesn't care about your opinion. Yeah. I mean, and now that even what us, David, we're kind of entering this space. We don't do chili crunch or chili crisps, but we have chili oil, right? First of all, no one can, I don't think anybody can trademark chili oil because that's just been around for too long. But it's like, I do feel the pain of these small businesses because they're trying to come up and it's true that they're not rich yet. Momofuku is kind of like the big dog in the market. Why not let the little guys do their thing? and use Chili Crunch still? Because why are you trying to almost monopolize the market, it seems like? Yeah, I I do think that there's also potentially, from me reading the comments section, there's a feeling like, not obviously not all, but some Koreans don't really care about other Asians and will like possibly, you know, see things from other Asians, take it, rename it, because they're just trying to come up for themselves. Mm. By the way, guys, this is from the comment section. I'm just saying there's some uh, underlying tone that I read. Right, right, right. Anyway, let's just get into the comment section. Somebody said, what a dork. This guy is so toxic. Obviously, some Koreans themselves are coming out against him being Uh like, listen, us Koreans, we don't co-sign this. We understand that Chili Crisp or Chili Crunch was Chinese originally. Uh, I don't want any part of this. Mm. Um, of course, other people said, you know, him turning into the villain was an inevitable. He became too rich, too many rich friends, and started hanging out with too many white celebrities. Oh. Do you think that there's this sense, Andrew, that Asians, once they make it, they're like, nope, I'm the only cool Asian. I'm the only Asian in these elite, white, rich, you know, whatever spaces, everybody else, back to the enclave in whatever towns, you Asians. Guys, well, I made it. So, you know, I'm the only Asian that matters. That's how it sounds like. I'm not saying he doesn't care, but this is the type of move that you make when you think you're better than other people. Now, I do want to be clear, guys. Fly by Jing is another good chili oil, chili crunch brand, and they are also trademarking Sichuan Chili Crisp. Specifically, Sichuan Chili Crisp is the phrase that they're trademarking. You can go look it up on the website right now. Is there anything wrong with trying to trademark Sichuan Chili Crisp? If Fly by Jing, Jing herself is from Sichuan, it's a little bit more specific. You can't you can't trademark Chili Crisp, right. but you can do Sichuan Chili Crisp. Is that even for me? I'm not from Sichuan, so I'm not going to tell her what. But if I was from Sichuan, I might feel like, but Jing, I can't make Sichuan chili crisp. You know what I mean? But she was first to market too, so she took the risk. I'm not saying that I can't see any argument from Momofuku's IP department. I can see the argument. Like, I'm not going to give them zero legitimacy. Isn't it that, listen, in America and in this capitalistic society where anybody can create a brand, also a lot of people can trademark things. Now, this is completely legal. It is what it is. But the people also have the freedom to speak up about it. Andrew, when uh, Kim Kardashian tried to trademark kimono, Uh when LeBron's team tried to trademark Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. When Disney tried to trademark the Day of the Dead merchandise for a second because they were coming out with, uh, you know, oh, all Dios those movies. Los yeah. Muertes. Well, oh. That was a big deal because you can, I'll tell you this. The people who trademark the things in the Anglo-English dictionary, they don't necessarily care about the motherland culture that it originates from. Mm. But the people from the motherland culture that have been living in that culture for hundreds of years, whether that's Los Dias de Muertos or the Chili Crunch, Lao Gama, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, they don't really necessarily understand the American legal trademark system either. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So they'll just use it, but they won't trademark it. 
And then a lot of people were like, oh, you know, if this guy was thinking like David Chang, Andrew David Tran could have trademarked Sriracha, even though he's a Chinese via guy who reinvented a Thai sauce in Rosemead, he could have did it because nobody else knew what Sriracha was in America at that time, but he didn't do that. So he lets other, everybody else call it Sriracha because he has some sort of at least cultural respect. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I guess it's... Uh... It's one of those shrewd business moves that's not a good look and is going to get you bad press. And I don't blame a lot of people because I think the Asian American foodie community, especially I would just say the Asian American community at this point, was starting to gel together. Kind of felt like at least on the food side. Like we're rooting for each other. Yeah, we were all trying to check each other and be like culturally sensitive, help each other out. And even, you know, me talking to a lot of other even sauce people, there's always this abundance mindset and we're trying not to be like crabs in a bucket, you, you mean know? mean growth mindset versus scarcity mindset when it comes to the economic pie. Yeah, and we're, all, and we're all nice to each other even if you have competing products. I know people who have the Asian hard seltzers who are still friendly with each other even though they are technically in competition. Now that David Chang kind of feels like he's stepping out of the Asian American community by doing this. Like he's like, well, you know, you guys aren't my responsibility. I'm just doing what I need to do. Maybe it was his legal team, but he's going to take the heat for it. Right, right, right. I mean, some people were even in the comment section saying it's like these guys weren't cool when they were young, like in middle school and high school. So they like, once they got their status, they want to like elevate themselves amongst the community or the enclave communities that didn't make them feel cool. Yeah. Like, you know, this is some psycho behavioral, like teenage adolescence sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, I, I mean, I think that... uh he had an opportunity to kind of be a, maybe he didn't want it, but he had the opportunity to be kind of a leader in the Asian American space as far as brands go. And he kind of was, but he's not being like a, a benevolent leader. He's no right. longer a respected leader right now. And I know that Eddie Huang went through the same arc too. Like, a lot of people saw him as fighting for Asians in the Western spaces, uh, journalistic spaces, New York Times spaces, HBO Vice spaces that a lot of Asians weren't in. But then a lot of stories started arising that it's like when Eddie Huang's around other Asians, he tries to put himself up here and mm. all other Asians down here, especially AZNs, Enclave Asians, Asians who only know other Asians. Yeah, I, I really see that a lot. I'm not saying all, but I see that a lot from a lot of Asians who gain like mainstream kingship or knightship um somebody said defending him that he was really just going after trader joe's but it, here's the thing he's giving c and d's to all the little guys so yeah. it's not just coming after trader no joe's. he's not just going after trader joe's he is lit their their legal team is literally going after the little guys um a lot of people are saying what is the deal with trying to uh trademark stuff from other types of Asians that you don't belong to, Andrew. What is the rule around, like, you're uh, Korean, you name your thing Japanese, you're trying to trademark Chinese names. Is that okay? Or should you stay in your lane? Or what, where is the where are the lines drawn? Uh, Man, if you start drawing lines, then, like, certain chefs can't serve different food, right? How? Or is it more of the trademark thing, right? Because there's a sense that if you trademark it, Right, you no one else can make it now. If we trademark Smala, that makes sense because that's such a specific name. I'm not, I'm not trademarking yeah, chili but you oil. Guys are, Andrew, you're not from Sichuan. But what is Smala? That's a made up word. We made that word up. <laughs> but like, but you're a Cantonese, you cannot even take the Mala flavors. That's <laughs> true. That we should have said it in a in a Cantonese term. But I think that I don't know if I can draw a line specifically for other Asians appropriating or trademarking other Asian stuff. I just know that there's going to be backlash and they, you deserve backlash if you're going to pull a move like this. Yeah, I so. think that here's the thing. I think any Asian can cook any other Asian's food, but just call it what it is. Like, you show it the respect. Don't rename things. I remember um, in New York, like, Taiwanese Shave Snow got renamed New York Shave Snow because people didn't want to accredit Taiwanese people. I didn't like that. My whole thing is, like, you know, because David Chang has a reputation for this. He called them Momofuku buns, but they're actually just guabaos from Taiwan or Hunan or wherever you want to attribute it. The original source he was probably China. But, like, I'm saying that it's, like... I just am saying, like, I get it. White people, they don't know a lot. The Western world doesn't know a lot about the East, but we shouldn't take that as an opportunity to try to dominate the Asian American narratives. 
Like we, we should have a growth mindset. We should share. And I hope that David Chang tells his team to retract this request. Yeah. Even though I get that they do have some case for it, because technically they use crunch and, and Lao Gama wasn't using the word crunch. Uh, you guys let us know what you think about this down below. Do you feel any type of way? He is, they are sending cease and desist letters. Basically, those letters mean that uh, telling you to stop using the phrase chili crunch if you have it in your brand legal action, and right? on your product right now, threatening legal action. It's like a warning letter, pretty much. So uh, let us know how unfair is this? It is legal. Technically, I think for them to do it, but it's definitely not cool and it's kind of divisive. I, I'll say this. David Chang, I think he's like in his 40s. I don't know if he's 50 or not. The younger Asians, I feel like they feel like more with the growth mindset and not just like, oh, I'm the first people to bring this to the whites. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think we're the younger generation is not thinking on that. That's an older generation thing. I will tell you this. Anybody from the Momofuku team that is watching, people are trying to boycott your products right now. So I don't know if you're really, it's really going to affect your bottom well, line. Well, we don't care because we only care about what white people think. We don't care. Mainstream market. You guys aren't mainstream. Not, not part of the voter block. All right, everybody. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Foodie controversy. Trademark controversy. Momofuku controversy. Chili crunch controversy. All right, everybody. Until next time, we are the Hot Pop Boys. And until next time, peace.